We're pleased to have joining us at the Lincoln Night this afternoon, Business, Enterprise and Energy Minister Matthew Hancock. Welcome to the Lincoln Night. Great to be here. And welcome back to the Lincoln Night again, Carl McCartney. Thank you. Good to be here too. Okay, I'll start with you first, uh, Matthew. Um, there have been more start-up businesses in Lincolnshire in 2014 than anywhere else in the UK. Um, but why does the council get ignored on such a national scale and what can you do to help businesses in the county over the next five years? Well, I'm here in order to listen to businesses from uh, across the town um, and this is what it's all about, um, making sure that you come to important cities like Lincoln, listen to what's needed and then we can take that into action uh, in the next five years. So I've been going around the whole country as the business minister, visiting a hundred businesses in a hundred days and asking each one of them the question, what can we do to make it easier for you to do business, to grow, to create the jobs that everybody wants to see? And that's what I've been doing here today with Carl. And what have you heard back from businesses? Well, there's some big national issues, like the fact that uh, the employment allowance, the fact you don't pay national insurance on the first £2,000 means that people have been able to take on apprentices where they haven't been able to in the past. That was good news. Um, but also things that need to be tackled, um, like business rates, and the fact that we're having a review next year of business rates, I think, is important and going to be important for Lincoln. And that's especially important up at Railgate, talking to the independent retailers when we've been up there for a short while before we came down here to the interview. And obviously, Matt was talking to various different business owners and operators up on the Railgate, and that was one of the main issues, along with signage and the usual issues that I've been talking to the City Council about for a while now. And what will you do to champion businesses in Lincoln over the next five years if you're re-elected? Well obviously when I'm re-elected I'll be doing exactly the same as I've done for the previous five years which is making sure that I'm an effective voice for the small businesses and the independent retailers who are up on Bailgate with both City Council and Lincoln Big and the County Council. And let's move back on small businesses again. Um, mm. Do you think they should be forced to pay the living wage? In Lincoln 20% of um, Works are not paid the living wage in the city, and that's according to um, statistics from the Office for National Statistics. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think absolutely they should pay the living wage when they can, um, and uh, obviously abide by the minimum wage. I'm a very strong supporter of the minimum wage. Um, but we've also got to balance the need to ensure jobs can be created. You know, unemployment is down sharply in Lincoln over the last five years. That is great news for everybody who's got a job, who wasn't before able to provide for their family and to uh, have the self-reliance and the dignity that comes with a job. Um, this is good news locally and it's part of a broader national picture. So you've got to make sure that you keep those jobs coming. So where people can pay the living wage, great. Um, and we are supporting businesses to be able to to do that, um, but if you made it uh, obligatory, then you'd effectively be hiking the minimum wage uh, by a significant amount, and that minimum wage is set to try to have the highest reasonable level consistent with not harming job prospects. And you know, we've had a very strong jobs recovery, and we want to see that continue. So, with job creation, then um, you talk about um, sort of living wage and sort of how it's an ideal, you, you'd like businesses to pay that, but if mm. you can't afford to, then they shouldn't have to. In terms of job creation then, are the jobs that the Conservatives are looking at creating, are they ones which pay higher than the living wage, or are they ones which are lower than the living wage? Yeah, well if you look at the jobs that have been created, it's not the government that creates jobs, it's, it's, it's enterprise, it's people who create jobs. Um, and the 80% of the jobs that have been created uh, are full-time jobs and three-quarters of them are high are skilled jobs so you know the, the jobs recovery has been good news for those who've got those jobs uh, but clearly we've got to keep that on track and I don't want to put that at risk and that means sticking with the plans that we've got and ultimately here it means sticking with the brilliant local MP Carl McCartney and not trying to throw that all away with some combination of the Labour Party and the SNP who don't care about what's going on here in Lincoln uh, and would send all the money up north. Well, thank you for that, Matt. Obviously, I would agree in time with everything uh, that's just said, <laughs> but especially actually talking about the, the, new, um, the new jobs that we have in, obviously, in Lincoln has been a, a, a especially good news for the city. Uh, I think there's over 260 new businesses in the past five years. But certainly, talking about youth unemployment, that's less than half 
that it was when we came into office in 2010, and unemployment's been reduced by over 44%. To That's all good news that those people are now in work and taking home a uh, wage packet to support them and their families. It's, you know, it's, a, it's a good way of moving forward, and certainly with a Conservative majority government, we're going to do more of the same in the next five years. And how would you help those as um, someone who wants to be Lincoln's MP for the next five years? How would you help people who are perhaps not in skilled jobs? You obviously talk a lot about sort of improving the skills base and improving the skills in the city, but what about people who aren't in skilled jobs? Well, certainly, again, something that the Conservatives were determined to do was increase the number of proper apprenticeships. And in Lincoln, in the past five years, we've seen an increase of over 5,000 proper apprenticeships. These are apprentices that last at least a year and are properly funded by employers. And those, those new apprentices have gone on um, to work in various different whether it's the company they've done their apprenticeships with or whether it's other companies, and that's something that helps the local economy. Now, we've done that in Lincoln over 5,000. I'm sure there'll be more than 5,000 in the next five years of proper apprentices. And look at the figures across the country. We've done tremendously well, I think. I think it's 2 million apprenticeships that we've now achieved in five years, and I think we're looking to do 3 million in the next five. Um, and that gives young people a great start in life. Not just young people, older people do apprenticeships as well. Um, and I think we've, you know, we've followed the same as the rest of the country in, in improving those prospects for people here in Lincoln. Okay, let's move on to energy then, because obviously mm. you're energy minister as well as being yeah. a business minister. Um, there's a lot of local opposition to wind farms and solar panels. Yeah. Um, say they damage local views, the sort of local environment. Um, what's your position on that? Well, we think that, th that most importantly, that local people should have a say, the final say over onshore wind. Um, as opposed to onshore wind being able to be uh, appealed as now, and we don't think that it should be subsidised. Um, and uh, you know we've got to make sure that we invest in renewable energy as a country, um, and that we tackle our carbon emissions. But we've got to do that in a way that also protects the beauty of the local environment. And you know here in Lincoln, there's a spectacularly beautiful local environment that we need to protect, whilst also making sure that we tackle carbon emissions and we keep costs down. So it's about getting that balance, the balanced approach, um, but giving local communities the final say on onshore wind is a big, a big positive step. Yeah, I understand that. So what are you saying? Are you saying that you're in favour of onshore wind farms or are you opposed to them? I think local people should have the final say and that they shouldn't be subsidised by the taxpayer. Carl? As a local person, obviously I'm going to say that I'm opposed to onshore wind farms because as much as my, my colleague the Minister has said, um, they can be of use, renewable energy, in the right place. And I think um, wind farms probably need to be mostly offshore, but certainly not in some of the proposed areas that would ruin the views, not just in my constituency, but actually across Lincolnshire. How can you be seen as sort of committed to renewable energy then if you're opposed to solar farm, um, solar panels, well, onshore wind, as you've just said? We're not said opposed it. per se. You, I think you're putting words in certainly in my mouth and some but not the ministers, but, 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 but it's not everywhere we're saying But this MPs is. across sort of the country would say similar things to you. They'd say, well, we don't want um, wind farms in our area because it will spoil the views, and they may have a point. But how will they? How will we tackle renewable but I don't, energy? I don't think you or anybody else will be proposing that we take wind farms in you know, any areas within the Lincoln constituency because it's quite an urban constituency. But, but actually, if you talk, if you talk to the surrounding MPs, I think they'd be, if you like, singing from the same hymn sheet as me and the Lincolnshire County Council, which is there is a right place and, and area for wind farms. We don't think that is onshore in Lincolnshire. There are plenty of areas offshore that I think would be very good areas for, for wind farms to be. And we already have them. There's no reason for, for doing the same elsewhere offshore. So I'd add to that, I'd say firstly we're a global leader in offshore wind and we have a very long uh, coastline uh, which includes some uh, quite flat um, shallow sea uh, which makes it possible to, be, to have a lot of offshore wind. Uh, also in the right place I'm a strong supporter of solar which can be much less intrusive to the local environment and the costs of solar are coming down sharply. In fact the latest auction of subsidies showed that solar was cheaper than onshore wind. Um, so, you know, there are, and there are a million people now across the country who live in houses that have got solar panels on their roofs, and increasing numbers of commercial properties do as well. So it's about tackling these long-term problems in a way that keeps the support of local people, uh, and also does so in a way that doesn't cost the earth and add unreasonably to bills. Matthew Hancock, Colin McCartney, thank you both for your time. Thank you very thank you. much.